Well, hello, my friends. We're back on the battlefields of Total War Warhammer 2, and the Green Horde rises as Warzag, the Great Green Prophet, and the Wah descend on the Tower of Hoeth to face off against the Warriors of Chaos. Some really good players in this game, Soothsayer on the Greenskins, and Aerocrastic playing as Chaos, so it should be a good one. And Warzag, in my mind, is the most competitive Greenskin Lord. Huge selection of tools to choose from, with Effigy of the Git that can pin Lords and Heroes in place or stop Cav from charging, the completely reworked Global Wah, a great selection of spells, and the Bonewood Staff. And that item in particular synergizes incredibly well with the Greenskin playstyle, because he has a ton of low cooldown augments that each time he casts will be triggering that map-wide melee attack and charge bonus buff. So it's not uncommon to see mid to low tier infantry with like 60 plus melee attack, and Black Horse can even start approaching like 100 if you really focus on stacking. So that's obviously a terrifying proposition. So a lot of factions now really don't like investing in much of a front line against the Greenskins at all, because it can be so scary to fight in melee, especially when Wah is active. And if we take a look at Soothsayer's army, you can see why someone might want to avoid that like the plague. Crimson Killers on the right flank, alongside three more Black Orcs, tailor-made for taking heavy metal in a head-on engagement and winning, but he also has a lot more wide army behind that. He has three Goblin Archers and Rusty Heirs, and that's just a lot of sheer volume of fire. You don't need accuracy or powerful bows when you've got that many pea shooters all focusing down the same target. And even armored monsters are going to have a bad time with 500 gobos lobbing arrows their way. But as we take a look at Aerocrastic's army, it's not exactly heavy metal. Four Marauder Horsemen for harassing the back line, Chaos Sorcerer Lord with Flaming Sword of Ruin, Cascading Fire Cloak, and Fireball, so pretty much the go to cost efficient spells for Laura Fire. And looking to do a little bit of Lord Sniping early on, so we'll see if he can chunk down Spleen Ripa from long range. But the infantry, four marauders with few armored trolls in support, not much in the way of a front line, that is completely intentional. He's conceding the fact that he's not going to win a melee fight, which is the right call considering what Soothsayer brought, and instead going to focus on the support and the mobility game to avoid that wah and take him down in a game of attrition. Pulsating Pleasure Cannon is also here, spewing some sticky icky purple ectoplasm, just an obscene unit. Like seriously, CA employees had some fun designing that thing for sure. Even added some nice juicy plums at the base, with a light bluish hue, ripe for the picking, ready to take them to farmer's market. And out here, we got some Chaos Knights hidden in the trees, so some extra mobility and some plunging power, which the Chaos Army is severely lacking right now, so that'll add some nice, nice utility, nice killing power there out on the flank. And if you can get an ambush off, could maybe turn the Greenskin flank and do a lot of damage that way. Early on, Hell Cannon will open up and try to take some Goblin Archers off the field, and early on, he's trying to pretty much just scout and get in range of the Greenskin army and see if there are any hidden Night Goblin Archers or anything like that in the back, and he will find them. So he sees the Rusty Heirs now, and he sees the rest of the Goblins, and Hell Cannon will want to focus those down early, because honestly, Hell Cannon is not great against Black Orcs. They're kind of in loose formation. There are a lot more densely packed infantry in the game, and Greenskins, they're a bit more spread out in their elite infantry. So Hell Cannon isn't ideal for taking them down, but it is ideal for shredding through Goblins, and look at that one hit, and that Goblin Archer is pretty much already down to half strength, and it's the Soul Devourer ability, gives it such ridiculous reload skill, goes directly into the second one only a couple seconds later, and those Goblin Archers getting pretty much taken to Pound Town right now. Not a fun way for them to start the battle, and out on this flank, terrified by the Chaos Sorcerer Lord, some Goblins will rout, but they are terrified not routing, so they will come back, they won't be able to run down in perpetuity. And in the center here, more goblins taking some pretty powerful shots from the Hell Cannon. Now, these Broken Tusk Mob and Spider Riders have one job. Protect the back line, keep the archers from being tied down, make sure those Chaos Knights and Shaggoth don't get rear charges into the Black Orcs. But the game plan is simple for Chaos too. Eliminate their leadership early, don't give the Greenskins expensive units to kill, just poke down Warzag with some magic missile play and avoid committing too heavily. Soothsayer will activate Wah here and push that melee advantage, while Chaos Knights spring their ambush from the trees, and run over some unfortunate Groby on the left flank. But in the center, these Marauders are just gonna get thrown to the wolves. They're just there to die. Hold the line for as long as possible, but they will die horribly. I mean, they're gonna get skewered by even goblins. 46 melee attack on the little guys, not even counting the Black Orcs. It's way too much to ask from naked barbarians, and those little green machines are gonna chunk right through them. But that's why he hasn't invested in infantry, right? Like, sure, he could have gone for some Chosen with great weapons or something and try to contest that melee fight harder, but it's really risky. I mean, four Black Orcs with Wah, here we go, and the Bonewood Staff continuously proccing. That is a really tall order, even for Chaos to grind through in a melee fight. Now, the Rusty Heirs have moved up, 
but the Hell Cannon is starting to focus them down, and as he gets a shot off, going right for that blob group of archers and shredding right through the center of that formation, and that is absolutely worth it from that Hellcan's perspective. Again, the Black Arcs are tied up in melee. Hellcan's gonna have a hard time focusing them down because they're in the fight. But those those Goblin Archers, especially to Rusty Airs, they will do a lot of damage over the course of the game, even to stuff like Armored Trolls. You can see, on the left flank of Chaos Infantry line, those Armored Trolls, even with their armor, Rusty Airs and another Goblin Archer unit just shredded right through them, and they're already routing. Now, of course, they don't have great leadership, but that is a problem that Chaos will face in this infantry engagement. Got the eight peak loonies here, somehow snuck and stabbed their way into the back lines as the Shaggoth and Marauder Horsemen run them down. They will be unbreakable, but I don't think they're gonna survive for very long in that engagement. But a lot of the mainline infantry for Chaos, as we expected, breaking early. Of course, when that initial wall goes off and you take that fight, the beginning of the fight is not going to go very well for you. It's how you stabilize afterwards that will determine how the battle goes. And right now, Chaos Knight is roaring in from the flank, running over some more Groby Spearmen, who do not have a bonus for Slarge, so they don't really care about taking that engagement. But they're just pushing forward inexorably as the Crimson Killers run down some of these Marauders, and they're already up to like 90 kills right now, kicking ass with those AoE attacks and dual choppas. Here, Effigy of the Git went down on the Chaos Sorcerer Lord, and some armor-piercing crisscross fire from the Sundering Rusty Heirs, and from the rest of the Groby Archers, chunking down that Lord a little bit there, so Chaos gonna have to be real careful. And the Hell Cannon already being run over, Chaos Knights being forced into a melee engagement they really don't want to take. They just had to charge in, I mean, they had to stem the tide of the Green Skin Advance here, and it's gonna be bad news for them, because they're up against armor-piercing bonus for Slarge Cav, we got a fireball coming through, and oh my god, gonna immolate three models there. Continue going, it's only like a foot off the ground, and kill a random marauder like a hundred feet past that fight. That is hilarious. Uh, that's a really unlucky dude right there. He would not win any kind of lottery with that kind of luck. But yeah, that was unfortunate for him. He's dead. Shaggoth is gonna try to hold the line here, but the Soul of Damnation is being completely run over, and Chaos Knight's routing. They can't take that fight. I mean, there are Black Orcs. There's Air We Go, a bunch of buffs going off right there in the center. No way Chaos Knights were going to be able to survive in a long, prolonged engagement there. And yeah, they're having a big problem at the moment. Chaos is not looking too good, but they do have some free Marauder Horsemen in the back lines. They can run down these archers and maybe start stabilizing, killing some of those long-range units in the back. Manticore Lord persuaded to leave here, doesn't want to stick around as Armor Sundering Arrows get into them. But yeah, this is where... I think Soothsayer might be overplaying his hand just a little bit. He is protecting his back line against his Marauders pretty well, but look at how spread out this battlefield is now. His Black Orcs no longer have the support from the Archers to quickly chunk down those Armored Trolls or the Shaggoth, and without support, these Black Orcs, they're not gonna trade very well against the combination of Marauder Infantry with the Shaggoth charging behind and Armored Trolls in there. Sure, some of those Marauders are gonna rout, but that is absolutely a fight that Chaos wants to take when they've got that kind of local superiority. They're gonna run over Black Orcs and all that armor piercing will definitely chunk through them. There are more armor trolls here and they don't have support either. So on both sides, a lot of expensive units that have been completely isolated and both players punishing the stuff that got a little bit too excited really well. And that's kind of the nature of a hectic battlefield like this one where the lines break down that quickly. Who can capitalize harder and faster will go a long way in determining who edges his victory out. And right now, I'd say Soothsayer has the upper hand. Spider Riders with their poison being used exceptionally well to slow down Chaos Fast Movers, and Effigy of the Git gonna put that Chaos Sorcerer Lord in a really bad position. Worst Egg is kind of a hybrid caster. He can hit really damn hard when he has AP on Spleen Rippa, and of course all those buffs as well. I mean, that Chaos Sorcerer Lord is about to go down. If he goes down here, I think Chaos just straight up loses the game. And the balance bar is heavily in the favor of the Greenskins right now, and every time these Marauders charge in to do a little bit of skirmishing or killing on the Goblin Archers, the Broken Tusk Mob or the Spider Riders are there to clean them up, and there is a lot of routing units on the Greenskin back line for Chaos. But, same thing over here. These Black Orcs got overzealous, and the Shaggoth and Armored Trolls and that beautiful charge from Marauder Horsemen, running them down, running them over, and a lot of that infantry superiority that Soothsayer had has kind of gone the way of the Dodo here because they got too far up, pushed too far forward, and got punished heavily by Aerocrastic. So some great plays coming out from both players right now, but I mean, look at the balance bar. Greenskins have a heavy advantage at the moment. Question is, can Chaos do something to bring it back in their favor.
Now, I think that Balance Bar should shift back a little bit closer if the Chaos Sorcerer Lord stabilizes and comes back from routing, and he just has, so that's good. I mean, if he lost the Lord there, the game's pretty much over. I don't think Chaos has the leadership here to really sustain and prolong combat against rear charges from Broken Tusk Mob or anything like that, but both players will take a moment here to kind of get everything back together, run down the few stragglers that are still around on their side of the field, kind of reset the situation and rethink how they want to take the final combat. Shaggeth will do great here, charging in. Black Orcs are immune to Psyche, so the Terror won't really set in, but they will get run over. Doesn't really matter. Armor trolls and everything completely surrounding them. Bash their ends in, crush them, turn them into paste, stick them in a stew, and let's take a look at what we've got left here. So Chaos Sorcerer Lord, still on Overwatch, still on that Manticore with the Lore of Fire. Probably has a decent amount of Winds of Magic left, too. I've seen a couple buffs go down, a couple, a couple fireballs, but look at that. White Tower of Hoeth there. Glorious in the background. But yeah, I imagine he's got plenty of his Winds of Magic left. I imagine we'll get to see at least one or two more Cascading Fire Cloaks and Flaming Swords of Ruin. But Greenskins definitely have numerical superiority here. And Warzag is in good shape, important to note. Fireball flying forward. Gonna slam through a few Bacon Riders. He likes his piggies crispy and well done, I guess. But it is worth noting here, Black Orcs are not made for fighting what is left for the Warriors of Chaos. They are not really meant for fighting Armored Trolls or Dragon Ogre Shagus. They'd much rather be fighting infantry, but there's none left. There are no Marauders left for the Warriors of Chaos. Taking out Warzag early has not worked out for Aerocrastic, but he still has a Shagath and a Manticore that can try to find Warzag in this impending melee scrum as the Armored Trolls and the Marauder Horsemen charge forward now, trying to isolate those Goblin Archers and take at least the squishy stuff off the field. If you can get all the support gone, for those black orcs if you can get rid of everything else then he might be able to surround those black orcs and finish them off but those spider riders will make that tough and soothsayer is doing a good job of layering his defense here making sure that those rear charges don't hit anything too important but those goblin spider riders are gone now shagath streaming forward you'll have to go right into the clutches of the crimson killers and even though they're not meant for fighting monsters they have really high weapon strength so scary for him anyway now this is important. Oh god, that's huge. Soothsayer has put Warzag a little bit too far into this engagement here. Shagath is right there. Armored Trolls are pinning him in place. Spleen Ripa doesn't have anywhere to go at the moment. He's taking a lot of damage and he will route almost instantly. Really good engagement from Aerocrastic there. And look at the balance bar. He's brought it a little bit further back now. It's still in the favor of the Greenskins. Warzag will come back. He managed to extricate himself from that really precarious situation. But that was not a good engagement from Soothsayer at all. Wurzag got crushed in like two seconds right there. He routed, Broken Tusk Mob are streaming forward, but Chaos Knight's free in the back to run down these Goblin Archers. And even though there aren't many of them left, with the support of the Armored Trolls, they will destroy those Archers and probably those Spider Riders too. And suddenly, things are looking very, very even on the fields of the Tower of Hoath. And even the Broken Tusk Mob, maybe the most important unit left on the field for the Greenskins, being overrun here, and they're gone. They're just straight off the field. Shagath, too much for them. Armor Troll is too much for them. All that armor piercing. And Wurzag needs to get the hell out of here and survive. If he dies here, Greenskins are in a whole hell of a lot of trouble. Now, he is going to get away. Spin Ripa a little bit fast enough. Just barely fast enough to escape. Chaos Knights and the Shagath and Armored Trolls dealing with some of the remnants of the Black Orcs, but those Crimson Killers are still going to be incredibly hard to bring down. They're at half HP, by far the most... Well, I mean, at this point, they're the most tanky unit left in the field. The Armored Trolls have, like, no health left. The Shagath is very, like, on a sliver of HP. Chaos Knights are pretty much about to route, and they are routing. Armored Trolls just routed. Chaos Knights just routed. Manticore Lord has no health and is wavering at the moment. <laughs> this could still go either way. Look at that balance bar. Still in the Greenskins favor heavily at this point, but Wurzag in a really bad position. Rainbows in the background. Warzag like, oh, it's so beautiful out here. I don't want to go. I don't want to die. But the Shagath wants none of it. And he is faster than that boar. Warzag just broke. He's not dead yet. And remember that when your lord dies, it's a bigger leadership penalty than when he just routes. So getting this final killing blow, making sure that Warzag does not come back, or at the very least that he shatters, super important for Aerocrastic here. And it looks like he's going to be able to do it. Manticore pinning him in place. He just shattered. Warzag's gone. Whether he strikes a killing blow or not, not the biggest deal at this point, I think. Um, I'm not actually sure if there's a different leadership penalty between dying and shattering. I think there is. I think if you get that killing blow, whether they're shattered or not, I think 
I think it's better to get that killing blow, and he's gonna get it! Warzag trips, falls over, Spleen Ripper goes down, and now he's just bacon left on the field. The Chaos and Shagath might be able to munch on afterwards, but this battle is still far from over because there's a full unit of Crimson Killers and another unit of Black Orcs fighting that Shagath right now. With all that AP surrounding it, that might be enough to bring it down. The Manticore Lord can't really afford to land in the fight because he was like 300 HP. I mean, a couple hits from the Black Orcs will kill him. Armored Trolls came back though, and a rear charge from the Marauder Horsemen, and things are starting to look iffy for the Greenskins. Armored Trolls roaring in from the flank, gonna start flattening these Black Orcs, smashing them into paste, and it's monster mash time now. Crimson Killers are badass infantry, they're amazing, but can they hold the line here? Their immune to Psych is gonna be so impactful here, so important, but when you get picked up like this, and slammed into the ground over and over and over and over again. There's not gonna be much left of you and it's happening again. I love that animation, it's so cool. He's literally just paced on the ground now, just his legs, that's all that's left of him. And the armored trolls want none of it. They are just unleashing all the rage that's been built up over the course of this battle. And finally, they're gonna turn those black orcs into mush and carry the day on slivers of HP of what remained for the chaos line. They're gonna pull it out. Chaos wins. Did you guys see how much that balance bar was in the favor of the Greenskins for the majority of that battle? It was literally like 75%, maybe close to 80% in the favor of the Greenskins at some point, which I think it was a little bit misleading, honestly, but I mean, they had an advantage there for sure, but Chaos did the most important thing, and this is how you deal with the Greenskins. Wa is super painful. It makes it so it's really hard to take a normal infantry engagement if you can take down their leadership. If you can snipe out Warzag or whichever they lord, lord they brought to the field, their leadership kind of gets a little bit wonky, even for the elite stuff. And only Black Orcs are going to remain once your lord goes down. And they don't deal very well with armored trolls or Shagus. Even the ones with the high weapon strength, even the Crimson Killers, made it tough. And Aerocrastic managed to snipe out the leadership there and turn a almost lost cause in his favor. Very impressive. But I don't want to gloss over what Soothsayer did there either. I mean, his effigy of the Gits were on point, as was his defense of the back line. Spider Riders and the Broken Tusk Mob were used amazingly to protect those archers and just slow down that enemy aggression. And if he had gotten lucky, gotten one more hit on with Warzag when the Sorcerer Lord was pinned down on the ground, he probably wins that battle. Great show from both players. Good display on how to deal with a terrifying infantry rush from the Greenskins. And despite them being a little bit too spread out that battle, losing a few units they probably didn't need to if they'd been a little bit more consolidated. Really impressive and exciting battle, and GG to Sooth and Aerocrastic. See you next time, Indie Pride, signing out for now.